Hi, Les from Thailand, retired and living the dream, and today it's answers time. I did a video last week and I asked people for a number of questions, and thank you very much for the response. There's a few questions that are around about the same, so I'm going to try and answer as many questions as I can. I believe that I've answered every single person's questions or comments anyway from that video. And if I haven't, just send me an email and I'll, I'll do it personally. I'll send you a personal message on your problem. Now a question to ask before we get into the answers. Do you think it'd be worthwhile if I did a weekly, a weekly video with a questions and answers session live for maybe an hour or so? So that gives anybody an opportunity to, to ask a live question. Now I've not, I've not done live questions before or live video, but if that's what people are interested, maybe we can set something up. But failing that, I always answer the questions if I can. Now the first question I've got to answer is actually quite an important one because not many people cover this uh, situation and it's for our disabled friends, uh, disabled travel in Thailand. Now I've got to say Thailand isn't wheelchair friendly or disabled person friendly. The streets aren't very good, the pathways are certainly not very good. In the UK we have drop curbs at every junction and everything sort of set up for a disabled travel around England. But here in Thailand sadly it isn't and you do need help and you do need guidance. Um, but I would say Chiang Mai is probably the most wheelchair friendly place that I've ever been to. That and Wa Hin. But I'm going to put a link to a website here that just caters with disabled travel or wheelchair travel around Thailand and they do many many weekly trips, daily trips and they have accommodation where you can stay and you can get looked after by various health care professionals. It's certainly not cheap but then if you're disabled you know travelling around is never cheap once you're disabled sadly to say. But Thailand's view on looking after people who are disabled is number one they will try their best to accommodate and help anybody that's in a disabled situation. Now there's vans that you can rent, um, taxis that you can rent, healthcare services you can rent. Basically, you can have somebody pick you up on the plane and look after you for the whole holiday and then take you back to the plane. It's gonna cost something, but, but then again, I think it's worth the cost of somebody taking care of you. So the website is this one here, Wheelchair Tours of Thailand. Now there are plenty of places in Thailand that do vacations for disabled people, but looking through the various websites, this one seems to be the best. And so it's a start. For those people who want to come to Thailand who are disabled and are a little bit hesitant in traveling here, these are the people to contact. At least it's a start. You're not going to be here on your own with no help whatsoever. Sort of another, sort of another medical question was about getting medication over here in Thailand. In reality, medication here is much easier to get than in the UK. And majority of medication you can get over the counter. For instance, I had a very, very bad ear infection when I left the UK. And on my way back to Thailand, I called in at Japan and China. And Japan and China wanted me to go and see the doctor before they would give me this medication. It was £150 to go and see the doctor in Japan, and I said no. And in China it was £100 to go and see a doctor before they prescribed this medication for me. And I thought, I'll wait till I get back to Thailand. So altogether, from leaving the UK to getting back to Thailand was a month. And then I went into the first pharmacy and they said, how many tablets do you want? So Thailand, majority of medication, you can get over the counter. So don't worry about it. Wherever you can get in the UK, you can get in Thailand also. Banking, it was another question about, for those people who are retiring from the UK and in Thailand, if you don't have an address in the UK, how can you maintain your banking? Simple, as long as you've got internet banking, you can carry on your bank account as long as you have a contact address. It doesn't have to be in the UK. As long as they have an email contact address, then you can keep your bank open in the UK. So you can maintain your bank account in England whilst leaving England and living here full time in Thailand. Another question here is living in Rayong, do I ever feel the need to go to Bangkok and Pattaya for shopping or entertainment? And the answer is yes we do. 
we, we usually have a trip with six or eight of us. We go to the patio to let our hair down because it's got everything in there. All the food that you could ever imagine that you want to eat. Um, entertainment, live entertainment. And it's just a good buzz and it's a good atmosphere in Pattaya. So before the situation came here in Thailand and the rest of the world, we used to go there once every couple of months, just for one night or a long weekend. And it was brilliant. It, it was just good to let your hair down. But do I feel the need to go and do that for the past two years? No, we don't. Because we have various social events around other people's houses and we take turns on having a, a drink party or something to eat around people's houses. So we've sort of entertaining ourselves. And going to Bangkok, we love Bangkok. Our wife has a clothes stall that she sells clothes on at the market. And every couple of months or three months or so, we go to Bangkok to restock with the clothes. And we stay there for the weekend and it's fantastic because it's the big city and it's something different to where we live. We live in the, in the countryside and it's very, very quiet here. But we certainly don't feel the need that we have to do it. But we enjoy it when we do it. Living in Krabi on a thousand pounds a month, it's going to be very, very difficult to sort of have a good life down in Krabi for a thousand pounds a month. You can do it on a thousand pounds a month here in Rayong because everything is much, much cheaper. But in Krabi, everything is much more expensive than it is up here. Accommodation, food, drinks. So therefore, Krabi, I'd go there for a holiday every now and then and live somewhere else. You're gonna struggle on a thousand pounds a month in Krabi. Now, if you live in Krabi and you, you think you can live on a thousand pounds, leave a comment down below. I've been to Krabi for a holiday for two weeks and that's as much as I've been to Krabi. Beautiful, stunning place, highly touristic. Because of the tourists go there, everything's much more expensive. House protection is another good question. For those people who are considering buying houses or land over here in Thailand, it is true you cannot own the land that the house sits on. You can own the, the house. For instance, if you bought a, a teak house, you can own the house, you can own the building, but you can never ever own the land that it sits on. But there are ways and means of being able to pr protect yourself. Now there's many, many horror stories about people losing the houses and the land that they bought here in Thailand. Again, a little bit of that is stupidity without looking into what goes on. And everybody hears the tale. So for those people who don't take precautions in it, well, it's sort of buy beware. There's really three things you can do. And I really wouldn't suggest buying a house unless you're actually marrying the Thai girl. Because then by marrying the Thai girl, you've got some rights anyway because you're married. Um, but as far as protecting the house is concerned, if you're married, you could do a prenuptial. Whereas you could protect the house because if you're paying for it, then you can protect that. But whilst being married as well, if you got divorced, she's entitled to half of everything anyway. So is it full of protection? No. If you, if you even doubt being with your partner that you might lose the house, don't do it in the first place. The second way of doing it, and this is more costly because then you have to you have to pay every year to get your accounts done, is buy the property through a company. So therefore you have to pay an accountant to, to do your books every year. It's sort of a, a wing in it way of, of buying a property and, and keeping it in other people's name, not your wife's name or your girlfriend's name. But I wouldn't suggest that way at all. And then the third way, which is probably the most simplest way, is that again, don't do any of this unless you trust your partner 100%. There's ways and means of getting a 30-year lease on the property. So if you put the house in your wife's name, then you lease the land from your wife for 30 years, and then you can get a 30-year extension on. So in effect, you can lease the land off your wife for 60 years. Now this stops her from evicting you off the land because you've signed the lease agreement and you've got the, the lease agreement where you can live on the land for 30 years, plus 30 years. Is it a, is it a foolproof way? I'm sure if, if they really want you off the land, there's ways and means that they can get you off the land. But I would say, if you're in any doubt whatsoever about buying a house over here, don't buy it, just rent it. Making friends without going to the bars. Now, it's, I'm not a bar person. 
Uh, when I lived in Pattaya, I frequented the bars, and I've got to say, it's majority of it is all the same talk. And um, you can make friends easily in Thailand. There are various organisations that you can go to. Um, I was a member of the Expats Club in Pattaya, and that was on once a week, and you got talking with many, many different people. I made many acquaintances in the Expats Club in Pattaya. Also in Chiang Mai, there's an expats club in Chiang Mai. And I was also a member of another sort of smaller expat club in Pattaya. And that was with doctors, pilots, dentists, very, very highly qualified people. So the conversation with them was always interesting. And we had a, a meeting there every week also. So yes, there are ways of meeting people without going to the bars. I live in Rayong and we've just started back up again, a, a brunch club. And we have six or eight people. Every Thursday we go for brunch and we we visit various restaurants for brunch and we, we can have a chat. Now in the group there's South Africans, there's Germans, there's Americans, there's Canadians, there's Irish and then there's English. So a good group of people. None of the people that meet on this brunch session are bar people. We're all happily married or with somebody and this is our social event once a week. Another question, what is the island closest to me? In, in a few of my videos, I put, I'm five minutes drive away from our local beach, which I am, and I'm 30 minutes away from a beautiful tropical island. Now that beautiful tropical island is called Koh Samet. It's got one of the top 10 whitest beaches in the world and it's 30 minutes away from where we live. And we're actually going there next month for four days. And it's a wonderful location. It's only a small island. It doesn't take you long. You hire a motorbike, you can do the whole island in, in less than a day. And it's just fantastic. I would suggest anybody, if they're anywhere near the Rayong, go and see and visit Koh Samet. Types of visas. Oh, no, I, I could just do a separate video on, on the types of visas and how you can get. I do various workarounds for various visas and my workarounds are all within the law. All my visas are always within the law, but it bends the rules. But then Thailand is very famous for bending its own rules anyway. So basically the, the three visas are the retirement visa, which is the OA visa, which you can get in your country when you come to Thailand. The O visa, you can transfer it from your tourist visa to an O visa for a retirement purpose. And then there's marriage visa. And that's where I'm on, the marriage visa. And my marriage visa is up for renewal next month. And I've done various videos with regard to marriage visas. I always have to go at least twice. We go once with all the paperwork just to see that She's happy with all the paperwork, she doesn't need anything extra, and then we go the week after with all the paperwork. For me, it's worth it because it's so frustrating if you think you're going to go and get your visa on that day, and then she comes up with, or the immigration officer comes up with, oh, well, I need some other paperwork. So take my advice with the marriage visas. There's a huge amount of paperwork required, much more than the retirement visa, but the marriage visa in some ways better than the retirement visa. And going along with that, what extra rights do you have with a marriage visa over a retirement visa? Well, the biggest advantage is you only need 400,000 baht in the bank, not 800,000 baht in the bank for your retirement visa. It's silly really, isn't it? Two people, you only need to show 400,000, whereas a single guy, you need to show 800,000. Just got a couple of more questions left. And will nightlife be back to normal in Pattaya by December? I would say everything should be open and running pretty much as normal. Now Thailand has been decimated, that's certainly the tourist industry. So it is going to take, I would say, maybe four or five years to get back to anything like it was pre the situation. But we were in Pattaya a couple of weeks or so ago, and although it was much quieter than we normally see it it's on talking to a couple of bar owners it's on the increase and it's getting better and better all the time so as from july the first the 
the entrance into Thailand is, is changing, so the Thai pass is all gone, you don't need the insurance. So it's a step in the right direction for getting the tourists to come back here. And by the newbies are gonna have a field day here because everything's open, sort of everything's new to them because if they haven't been here for a few years or if it's your first trip, it's gonna be fantastic. So don't be afraid that it's, it's gonna be dead. It isn't gonna be dead. What bars are open are very interesting and very entertaining. They've had a couple of years to redo, remodel, and there's plenty of new bars that are open. And the last question I got asked is, because I live in a rural location, what about bugs and snakes and things like that? Well, I'm lucky really. I don't really get bit by mosquitoes or bugs and things like that. Uh, snakes, we live in a rural location, so we have seen snakes and we've had three snakes in the house, but they've all been tree snakes or green snakes. And I've never, in the 10 years of living here, I've never ever seen a cobra. So touch wood, I never ever do see a cobra. But my advice, if you see a snake, go in the opposite direction. Just let it get away. If you attack it, it'll attack you. But if you just leave it, get it on its way, it'll go and it'll leave you alone. Bugs and creepy crawlies. Yeah, we've had scorpions and we've had bugs. And I've, I've got to say, we, my wife suffers more with bugs than I do. For instance, we went to Ko Chang for a week and after four days she was bitten to death by the sand flies and, but I didn't get a single bite and we both sat on the beach and we both there at the same time. So I think I've answered majority of the questions that people sent to me and thanks very much for the input and the, the good wishes and things like that. So if you want me to do a, a live stream every week with questions and answers, well, if I get over 30 requests to do it, and then it's worthwhile doing it, and then we'll go from there. But from Les, retired and living the dream. Till the next time, bye for now.